I'm Heather Kelly and I'm here with Megan McGrath. Hi Megan. Hi. How are you doing today? Well, thank you. Good. How are you? I'm great. Um, so, in the last seven years, you've climbed the World Seven Summits, um, the tallest peak on every continent. Um, and you were the youngest woman in Canada to do so, the first Canadian Forces member to do so. Um, that's quite a big accomplishment. And you have another huge expedition planned for this coming year. I'm taking a year of leave without pay from mm -hmm. my job in the Canadian Forces. Um, and uh, I'll be doing two major events. The first event uh, will see me travel to Antarctica, where I will travel uh, from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole, a distance of approximately uh, 1130 kilometers. Wow. Uh, following that expedition, I'll then lead um, an Everest base camp trek, so from Kathmandu to a base camp from Mount Everest. It's right. pretty exciting. Uh, and then I'll, I'll bring all those folks back to Kathmandu and then I'll return to Everest Base Camp, not to climb Mount Everest, but to climb the mountain that's 8,000 meters next to it called Lhotse. Okay. Um, following my attempt on Mount Lhotse in, in Nepal, I will travel to Pakistan and attempt to climb the world's second highest mountain, which is K2. It's often known as the Savage Summit. It's a very dangerous and technical mountain. So, Have you, have you climbed that mountain before? I've never no. attempted or climbed K2 before. Right. I did attempt a mountain near to K2, mm -hmm. and that one is called G2, or mm -hmm. Gashabram 2. Um, we retreated on that attempt. And uh, so, but it, it, this coming uh, in, in March, or excuse me, the summer of 2010, I'll, I'll go and attempt K2. Um, and if there's enough time, I will uh, attempt to climb Broad Peak as well, which is near to K2 uh, in, in the same region. Uh, that will take me to the end of August, where the monsoon season will roll into that portion of mm -hmm. the Himalaya, where I'll return to the other side of the Himalaya again and attempt to climb two more 8,000 meter peaks, uh, Cho Oyu and Shishapangma. So in total, I will be attempting in the summer of 2010 uh, to climb five 8,000 meter peaks. I'm interested to know what got you started in, as an adventurer? How does one become an adventurer? Oh, that's a good question. I, uh, I grew up, uh, I, I played with the boys a lot as a mm -hmm. kid. What can I say? You know, we were always out, whether it be playing in the street, tag, hide and seek, whatever. Um, and, and I spent a lot of time in the outdoors because of mm -hmm. that. And you know, uh, I couldn't help but also gain interest in movies like Indiana Jones, right. or I'd read National Geographic. This, the outdoors really intrigued me. There seemed to be a giant playground out there and things to do. And um, as I grew older, mm -hmm. it was a playground, but I also learned that I could challenge myself. Maybe it'd be climbing up a cliff or climbing up a tree or wandering around the bush aimlessly to see if I could have a natural bearing and get my way out, oh. truly. And, and this is fun for me. Um, of course, you're a kid, and, and you have to go through school, mm. and you don't have any money, and uh, or, you, or you have like a, a job that's like a, a pizza job or something, you know, and uh, you, you're always planning for the future. Well, I, I did all the steps and everything, mm -hmm. and I soon found myself in the in the Canadian Forces, and with a job, and it paid well, and um, it also gave me good vacation time. So I, I walked into a travel agent here in Ottawa and sat down and said, "Look, I, I want to do something exciting. You know, I'm, I'm getting a." big butt from sitting at a desk all day and I'm, I'm going nuts because I, I, I was very much challenged in my university days at Royal Military okay. College and I was missing that uh, intellectual challenge that I, I was always seeking and uh, and finally um, the lady said well and I described to her some of my interests and she's like well want to try mountain climbing I said in fact yes I do. Have, have uh, you done any I, I'd climbing? Never, I had never climbed the way I was envisioned climbing you know I, I pretended I was Sir Edmund Hillary on a cliff with mm -hmm. a stick in yeah. Sudbury, you know, and uh, that was all well and good, but I was pretending and I wanted to really, what was it like to really suffer from lack of right. oxygen and want to pass out? And what was it like to not be able to take a single step? I mean, who can't take a single step? Well, you I found actually out. found out <laughs> and it was so fun. Um, so my first experience was on Kilimanjaro. That was my first introduction to um, altitude. It was only 19, thousand feet, nineteen and a half thousand feet, but it's still, I, I did suffer the effects of altitude right. and I liked it, I liked it a lot. <laughs> and so uh, I, I took an alpine um, climbing course out in uh, Washington mm -hmm. state. And then um, I then went to uh, Aconcagua, the highest mountain in South America. And it was on that mountain in particular that I realized that this mountain climbing thing was certainly something I wanted to pursue. Right. And I did. Wow. And you, your expeditions seem to be a full-time job. How do you balance yeah, that? Yeah, um, I've um, 
I spend a lot of time after after hours, mm -hmm. after work, uh, so my personal time doing expedition uh, administration. Um, that's when I, I send out the sponsorship requests. That's when I update the website. That's when I'm doing interviews, mm -hmm. all these sorts of things. Um, and if something has to be done during the day, I, I definitely put in time beyond work hours at work uh, to make up for the time if I use some during the day for adventuring. The point is, there is a balance. I, I recognize that my job is my number, my Canadian Forces job is my yeah. number one priority, uh, and adventuring comes second. But um, for an adventure to be successful, you definitely got to put a lot of yourself into it. So it means some, a lot of after hours work for sure. Wow. Um, you mentioned um, the training that's required for your adventures. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's really important for you to be physically fit. How do you get in, in shape for your adventures themselves? Yeah, usually just before I go on adventuring, mm -hmm. I, I definitely put in a little bit more time for training. Who wouldn't yeah. really? You get a little scared that maybe you're not prepared and then you spend a lot more time doing it. And I'm yeah. one of those people for sure. I've been fortunate that for the most part, I've always been prepared for my expeditions. Um, and because of the significance of my upcoming year, yeah. um, we're at the, the what, three or four month point now. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely started to amp up my training. Okay. So people should know that I am focusing on training. It just happens that it's on weekends more when I get to do the training. Yeah. And a big factor in all this is, even if I don't get to do as much training as I want during the week, all the time, before an adventure, all my life, I try to leave a healthy lifestyle. And that's what it comes down to. Specifically, what does your training for an expedition entail? Well. It depends. My training uh, that I will do depends on the expedition at okay. hand. So my expedition for something like the Marathon des Sable isn't the same as my training for climbing Mount Everest. And my training for climbing Mount Everest isn't the same as going to the South Pole. And I, I just use a lot of common sense. Um, train like you fight is a saying that we have in the Canadian okay. Forces. So I, I, I train like I fight. I, if I'm going to be hauling um, you know, a 150-pound sled over 1,100 kilometers, mm -hmm. Um, I'm starting to pull tires now uh, okay. behind me. Now that's not 150 pounds, but at least it gets my body the idea, okay, these muscles have got to start mm -hmm. being clued in to what's ahead. Uh, it's also an opportunity for mental training. Having the mental stamina to be alone mm -hmm. in a, let's face it, a vast desert of snow with odd nunatuk or not odd peak yeah. peeking out of the snow, you got to be really kind of clued in and, and keep yourself motivated. Um, so. That's something I always keep in the back of my mind, is the I mean, mental aspect right. to all this. There's the physical, there's the mental. And I, I guess in some ways, I don't want to say like emotional training, but I mean, being alone for 60 days in one shot is going to be significant, and I, I don't let that phase me. In fact, I'm really looking forward to it. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. You mentioned that you sort of generally try to lead a healthy lifestyle. How important is your health to you um, just on, in your daily life and as an adventurer? I, I really take my health really seriously so although I don't train and eat mm -hmm. right and all that other stuff like obsessively I really do try to keep in tune with what my body's mm -hmm. telling me if I'm really fatigued I try to see what my body's lacking maybe I'm feeling the need for a hamburger because you know maybe I'm lacking in iron or mm -hmm. something or maybe um, I'm really dehydrated of course drink my water and of course really fatigued I mean fatigue is one that yeah I mean I've spent Saturdays sleeping so at the end of the day, what's really important is, uh, is to maintain your health, um, paying attention to yourself, just in general. Uh, and the reason is because without your health, you're not going to be able to achieve any of these sort of uh, adventures. So be sure to be clued in about your health. You've said that you're just a regular person with any particular, without any particular skills or special talents, and yet you've achieved some pretty amazing goals. Mm. Um, do you have any advice for women who are looking to try something new but don't really know where to start or don't think that they're capable? Yeah. Yeah, I have advice. <laughs> now, if anyone listens to it, good. If not, that's fine too. Uh, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> okay. uh, for me, the way I started off was, was small steps. Don't try to bet off more than you can chew at the start. Don't don't go and start trying to go to the South Pole by yourself one day just because it's a good idea and don't try to you know climb Mount Everest the first time you go into a mountain kind of thing that's right. fairly obvious right so by taking off small things that are achievable uh, you're not only gaining experience you're, you're also gaining the confidence and the skill set which to bring to the next level and the next level mm -hmm. and the next level so you're always helping yourself achieve success which is kind of the point uh, so 
when you look at your goals and what you want to do, what you have an idea, think is really look at the examine what you kind of have dreamed of always doing and say, is it a bit too much to take off at, at one mm -hmm. shot? Maybe I should address it at smaller bits and pieces to get to there. Uh, once you've done that, the, the next thing, and I think this is the hardest step for a lot of people, is making that phone call to the travel agent or the real estate agent or, or the school or right. whatever it is you want to do. It's picking up the phone and committing to the step that's going to make everything start happening. So Megan, you mentioned that people can get involved in your expeditions through sponsorship. Can you explain a little bit about how one would do that and what's involved? Absolutely. Uh, well, sponsorship is used to, to pay for many aspects of the trip. If, if you're not a, a corporation mm. or representing a, a larger institution, you're just an individual who's interested in, in supporting me, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, and secondly, um, that's totally possible. There, I welcome any, I always say even a dollar helps. I mean, mm. a dollar in a foreign country is a bottle of water or something, yeah. you know, it, it helps. Um, at the end of the day, though, I, I do have a level, it's called a trekking uh, sponsor, mm -hmm. level of sponsorship. Um, this is a $150 that will give you a, a picture of, of one of the objectives that I've achieved, and, and you have the choice of picture. Um, and in addition, I'll, I'll put your names on, uh, I, I do many presentations, whether it be for schools or businesses mm -hmm. or, or whoever, and I'll, um, of course, thank you in the presentation and uh, in the write-up as well. I'll, I'll definitely uh, give you a note of thanks at, at, in the write-up as well that I'll do following each expedition. Um, again, it, it, hopefully that's one way that I can uh, show or demonstrate my gratitude for that person's involvement in the expedition. Megan, it's been really, really nice to talk to you <laughs> okay. today. Thank you very no much. No problem at all. It's my pleasure. Take care. You too. My reason to get out of bed is because I know that by doing that job, it mm -hmm. might be tough and, and, and uh, challenging, but the reward is that if I work hard enough, I get to, I get to play. Mm -hmm.